Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to create this animated SVG icon from scratch. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial that uses After Effects, but you could watch this full course on After Effects at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna take a look at how to use After Effects to handle creating the animations of an SVG based graphic that we could then use and control with JavaScript. All right, so again, a quick look at the project that we're gonna do from scratch is uh, this right here. So this is an SVG graphic and it was animated entirely in Adobe After Effects, and we're gonna use something called the Body Move-In Plugin, which exports a data.json file based on the animation and the composition in After Effects. Uh, and then we can use uh, this Lottie.js to actually play it uh, and, and control it through JavaScript. All right, so this is the GitHub page. Uh, this is actually from Airbnb. Um, you can find out more information here with a bunch of really cool examples of what you can do. Um, so uh, we're gonna get up and running. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to install it and all of that good stuff, all right? So for today's question, how much experience do you have with After Effects? Is this something that you use regularly? Uh, regularly, rather. Uh, and you know, with this new ability to use After Effects, this is something that you might wanna learn more in the future. Let me know in the comments and let's get started. All right, so here I am at the GitHub page for Airbnb Lottie hyphen web. All right, so um, the very first thing, you, thing you're gonna wanna do um, after you're getting impressed with all these little examples is uh, the plugin installation, all right? So you can grab it either from the aescripts.com link right here or creative.adobe.com. Um, if you have Creative Cloud already integrated, you can just use this. And then mine says acquired already because I have it. However, it'll give you the option to um, install it. And after you do that, you can go to your Adobe After Effects. I'm gonna hit new project, don't save. And you'll see if you go to window extensions, you'll see right here, body moving or moving, probably body moving. All right, um, so I'm gonna go and start first here. And obviously we need to create the animation. So uh, I'm just gonna choose uh, 500 uh, by 500 pixels and hit okay. All right, so before you begin, the first thing that you should do is um, at the official documentation, which is linked right here, uh, go to After Effects, General Tips and Guidelines. Um, this is gonna let you know kind of how you should work within After Effects in order to keep your file size low because uh, the body move and plugin, once, which is the final step of this process after you've animated whatever it is you want to animate. In our, in our, our case, it's going to be an icon. Uh, the final step is to run this body move and plugin and it exports a data.json file. Um, and, and that's all it is. It's just one file that, that's used uh, for the animation. Um, you want to try to keep that file size as low as possible, obviously for uh, mobile especially. Um, so these are just some general tips um, to help you um, do things correctly uh, in an efficient manner. So for me, we're just gonna do a kind of like a magnifying glass icon. So with that, I'm just gonna left click hold and choose, uh, sorry about that, a, an ellipse. All right, so we could see if I hold uh, shift and control, we can scale from the center. Um, we have a stroke, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use it. Just gonna have a fill of black. All right, and we just need to determine, you know, the size of this. I'll say right around there is good. And then we'll take the pen tool and create the handle. So I'm gonna hold shift while I create the second anchor point. Um, that'll make it a 45 degree angle. That looks um, maybe right there, that looks Pretty good to me. Okay, so now with that, we could take the uh, stroke up. Whatever you think's good for me, that's about 42 pixels. Um, let's see here. 
let's just choose fit for this. All right. All right, so that looks good as a, you know, just the starting point of the, uh, the icon. All right, so then what I will do is, let's rename these, by the way. You just hit enter after selecting the layer. So this is handle, this is glass. All right, so I, by the way, composition settings, I have this at two seconds, basically. All right, so that's another important thing. If you want to adjust that, you can. Um, so what we want to ask ourselves is how do, do we want this to animate? So this is the part where it requires creativity um, and just coming up with an, an idea that makes sense in terms of animation. So what I thought of doing is just kind of, uh, you know, when it's hovered over, I, this will kind of move to the center and the handlebar will scale in and then at the same time, another sphere that's white will kind of pop in and out, giving you the illusion that you're uh, magnifying an element or something like that. So again, there's a million ways you could you could tackle animating such an icon. So um, no right or wrong, really. So uh, let's go ahead here. I think what we'll start with first is moving this glass here. So what we'll do is, oh, and by the way, one of the things that you should be aware of um, is that somewhere in here, I forget where it's at, is that you should try to avoid using uh, shape or yes, uh, only use path keyframe animations when absolutely have to, when you absolutely have to. All right, so maybe we should uh, email them about that. Um, those eat up the most space because it's adding data for each vertex on each frame. So let me show you what they're talking about. Right now, if we just move this around and we go, we look at the transform options down here, like if we move it, we'll see uh, the position will get updated. See, that updates. That's ideal. Um, and also when you wanna scale it, so if we wanna scale up, for instance, we can see it's scaling this pro these properties down here. That's ideal. What you don't wanna do is double click into it and you can see how uh, the selection box changes in appearance. If you start to change the size of this, it doesn't update the scale here. It does it through the shape and you don't wanna do that. It'll result in a larger file size. So that's just one thing to take away. Um, so let's go ahead and we're just gonna position this. So I'm gonna put a keyframe here at the very uh, beginning point and then just maybe around 30 frames, I'll put um, another one and we'll go ahead and make this centered. All right, so uh, over here in the different panels, we have a line. Um, I'm just going to choose a line horizontally and a line vertically. All right, so now if we go through this, we can see it's just coming like that. You could apply some easing to these. So if you select both and right click, we could just choose uh, easy ease, for instance. There we go. So you hit the uh, zero on your number pad. That will give you a quick uh, run, a playthrough of it. Now at the same time for the handle, we'll scale this um, or transform this in. All right, so we'll hit, uh, just choose this one, the glass layer and hit U. U will just only show you the properties with actual keyframes. Um, and that way it kind of lets, lets us know, you know where we can place the keyframes from the other layer. Um, this one, I will go ahead and just position it as well. Um, so put a keyframe there at frame one and then frame 30, we'll go ahead and let's see here. We'll just move it up. Like right there. All right. So we can take both of those as well. Right click easy ease. there okay so now I guess what we'll do is I uh, once we get to this point we'll have a I uh, another ellipse here and I'll just duplicate this so control D with that selected and we'll drag this to the top and we will hit you we'll get rid of any keyframes on here 
and then we'll push it over right there. And this fill is going to be, first we'll go ahead and take the um, hit S for scale on this layer, we'll scale it down. And we wanna make sure before we scale that down that this is centered. And we can simply double click, hold control and then double click this uh, tool right here. And there we go. So let's uh, scale that down again. Right here just for now. Um, and we wanna be able to uh, see or change the, uh, the the color of this rather. All right, so the fill will change here to white. All right, and let's see here. After that, we'll initially just scale this down all the way. So again, we'll scale it down from here. So we'll just change this to zero put an anchor point here. And then I'm not really too concerned about where I'm placing the next anchor point. Um, we'll scale it up. And then we're going to take both of these and just choose keyframe um, easy ease. I'll come back right around here. And we'll scale it down again. Maybe back up. and then all the way back down uh, to zero. All right, so let's give this a play. All right. Yeah, something like that is fine. Okay, so then what we'll do is at the end, we'll just uh, copy some keyframes here so let's hit you here, you there. What we'll do is take uh, this keyframe and this keyframe and paste it right here. Oops, don't wanna do that. So what I'll do is we'll just take this keyframe right here, paste it right there, um, and then this keyframe over here, paste it right there. And then we will take this keyframe on the glass layer And we'll put it right around there. And then this keyframe on the handle layer. And we'll paste it right there. So we get back to the original starting position. And then we'll end the timeline right there. So now let's hit play. There we go. So this is it looping, of course. Um, but it's not going to loop um, in the final product. All right. So at, you know, 100% here. This is what that looks like. Very, very, very simple stuff. Okay, so now uh, what we'll do is we'll go to Window. We will go to, uh, let's see, Extensions and Body Moving. Where is it at? Oh, it's showing up on my other screen. Um, and we're going to put it into a destination folder here. So we're going to select this for the Comp 1. We're gonna choose a folder here. And I'm just gonna do this off screen real quickly. All right, so I'm gonna put it in there. The file name data, they have that set by default. We'll just leave that, save it, and then we'll put in um, render here. All right, so now if we open this up, all right, we'll see that we have our data, which is 6KB, and this is what it looks like. It's just a bunch of, um, it's just an, uh, an array of objects here. All right, so now what we'll do, we're done here. So you can save this if you want, this project. I, I guess I'll save it real quickly. Um, let me save it in my right folder. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and I'm going to open up 
uh, a new the folder that I placed the data.json. So we'll see. We have this here. We also have the uh, After Effects project. You you don't want, actually want that. Um, so what we'll do is let's start with a index.html file. And oh, by the way, we're gonna go back to our After Effects because I forgot one little step. Um, when you have that uh, extension body moving out, um, what the hell? There we go. All right, well, for some reason, my uh, situation is not set up correct. Uh, there's, there's issues with it loading this, um, but not to remind that. You wanna click on get to player and then choose uh, your folder that we've been working in. All right, and file saved. Get back out of there. Now we can see we have our Lottie.js file. All right, cool. So um, what we'll do is hit uh, an exclamation point. I'm using Visual Studio Code for the code editor. It's free from Microsoft. Um, I'm gonna put a link here for our style sheet, which is gonna be in um, CSS main.css. And um, I'm just gonna call this icon. All right, and so I'm just gonna get some initial HTML out here um, just to showcase uh, it being used like in a navigation of some sort. Um, so we're just going to put just a few lines here. Nav, we'll have a UL element, a LI element, and we'll have um, an I ID equals search. That's where our actual icon will be placed into. And I'll just put search right here as a label. All right. So then let's create our CSS folder with a main.sass. So you'll need the SAS extension for Visual Studio Code. When you create that file, you'll see this shows up at the bottom, watch SAS, so we'll click that. It creates a CSS version based on your SAS file. Close that out. And then now we'll go ahead and create some um, HTML real quickly. So body, we'll do margin zero, font family. I have it installed on my system, so I'm not gonna have to I uh, import it or anything, it's Montserrat. And then we're gonna start with our nav element. So we're gonna say width about 25 or 22%, I say. I'm not making this responsive. Um, background, we're gonna do RGB 226, 226, 226. And that's just a very light gray to separate it from the rest of the page. And then the height is 100, port, or 100 viewport height. So then um, I'll right click this and open with live server for our index.html. And this is what we have so far. All right, cool. So let's continue on inside of here. We're gonna have our UL element. So margin will say zero. Padding top is gonna be 20 pixels and list style type is none. Let's get rid of the bullet points. Now, before we continue with this, um, what we're going to do is actually integrate our, um, our script that we need for Lottie's here. So I, we're just going to do a script source pointing to this file right here. And then we'll have another script here. And inside of here, we create a, uh, an animation. So var animation based on uh, the body move in plugin. So body move in dot load animations. All right, the container, we have to specify where it's gonna be placing this animation in our, our, our icon, it's gonna be search. All right, so we put in uh, document, <laughs> I need to put my hands in the right spot, document dot get element by ID, and that's gonna be search also accepts a property of renderer. In this case, it's an SVG graphic. This can accept a canvas as well as one other element that I forget. Check out the docs. Loop, we don't want it to loop, so we're gonna hit false. And then autoplay, we don't want it to autoplay either, so we're gonna put false. And then path to the actual animation is our data.json. What do I keep on adding semicolons there? All right, so um, now what we'll do well, what we'll do is set these both to, to true for now. That way we can see it. Or not. Where is it at? Well, let's check. Did something happen? 
body moving dot load animation is not a plugin. Okay, so what did I do? Is it load animation? Yes. Sorry about that. There we go. Now it's too big and it's auto playing and all that stuff. So we'll just uh, we'll fix that. Don't worry. So we're gonna change this again to false. And that way it just sits on the very first keyframe or the very first frame rather. So now um, we're going to, yeah, let's make it look better before we add the hover functionality to it. So our list item, we're going to add, uh, let's see here, cursor pointer, font size 1.3 EM. That's for the, the supporting text, font way is bold, text transform is gonna be uppercase, and then line height, um, we're gonna say 22 pixels, and then margin bottom, and this is helping us just uh, kinda, actually, no, I'm not, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna omit both of those values, never mind me. Um, SVG, so we're gonna size the SVG uh, based on a percentage, so I'll just say 15%, and I'm gonna put important here as well, and then also, our search, we're gonna do position relative. We're gonna to put top is 12 pixels and then margin right is 10 pixels. All right, so let's check this out. All right, that looks better. Awesome, so now what we'll do is come here um, and we're gonna put in or define a button, so btn equals uh, document dot get element by ID and that's going to be search and we'll say button add event listener and that will be mouse enter so this could be click if you wanted it or any other type of event and then we're going to put in animation because we created a variable up here and it accepts a number of different methods you can check out the documentation play is one of them so we're going to play it on mouse enter so let's hit play, or let's try it rather. There we go. Now it doesn't restart, right? You would think, okay, once we hover on and off, it, it doesn't work like that. We're going to copy this and we're gonna do mouse leave. And then we're gonna change this to stop. And you can see we can stop midway through and it just goes back automatically. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Make sure to answer today's question, which is how much experience do you have with After Effects? I'll see you guys real soon with new tutorials. Goodbye.